about pot. Pot talk. Oh, what? Talk about pot. Uh, <laughs> all right, we're back in Studio A. My name's Moose. We got Chad Drew, CT in the booth. Kevin Giles, all the way from High Times in the house. Welcome, man. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. I didn't come too far. I'm a Denver native, but I uh, do appreciate you guys having me out and giving me an opportunity to speak. So yeah, trifecta, yeah, trifecta for the uh, for the year, dude. We had we've had Mass Roots, we've had Doobie, but we had to go with the monster on pre 420. High times, man. Kevin Giles, very humble, new friend of mine. He thinks that I have him here only because of the name High Times, but of course, um, they would only, a name like High Times would only have an awesome sales manager or assign an awesome sales manager if you're really good at your job. Well, the other thing is because he's 40 plus and he has more hair than any of us. <laughs> Well, I just turned 41, so I technically am in my 40s, but I still probably act like I'm 20. All right. <laughs> Excited to have you here. Thanks for uh, joining us. First out of the gates, got to start out with the obvious elephant in the room. Talk to me about the name of High Times synonymously with Denver and how it's what's going on with you. Sure. No, it's a, it's a question that I get a lot in the market. Uh, you know, obviously we've had a few hiccups with, uh, you know, some cannabis cups over the last couple of years. And, you know, my job is partly to, uh, you know, squash some of the, the rumors that are existing in the market, but also to, uh, you know, show that we're here in the market. We're here to help you guys brand and become national and internationally known companies. And, and, you know, and quite honestly, we can't be high times without all the awesome work that all the great companies in Colorado are doing. Sure. So now it's my job to, you know, give you guys some exposure and, and, and see what we can do to, uh, you know, show the world that Colorado is the capital of cannabis. Have, have you seen any shift in kind of the approach from high times to Colorado since legalization? Yeah, a little bit. Um, I, you know, we are an international entity and, and world renowned. We've been around for 43 years. Um, you know, so we're, we're not as, you know, specific to markets as some of the other competitors out there. I mean, the ads and the articles that you see in the High Times that is on the table here is the same articles and ads that you would see in a High Times in London or in Barcelona or in Argentina. I, I know... Um, I got a late start in the mar in the marijuana um, everything life. You Me know? too. And the only the only outlet for stoners for a, or hippies or marijuana users or however you want to call them has been high times. And regardless of what's happened in Denver recently, like you guys are synonymous with it. Yeah, and I couldn't agree more. And and I came from out of industry myself, and I you know I couldn't be more privileged or honored to have stepped into a role and take on uh, the ownership of the Denver market, you know, for a brand like High Times. Very big. It's 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 truly a blessing. It's fun. And, uh, you know, I came from the sports and entertainment industry. And, you know, and this is a, a, a publication that's synonymous with the cannabis space. And where this industry is growing, there's, there's really no ceiling. And you look at, okay, Denver had, or Colorado, I guess, had $1.3 billion worth of cannabis sold last year. Yeah. And for me, I think it's really cool because that's $1.3 billion that isn't going to black market drug exactly. dealers yeah, or totally. drug cartels or yep. gangs. Yep. You know, that's going in, back into our community. And, and guys like you understand some of the tax laws that are around. You know, the government's making their share, too. And I think as this legalization movement spreads, you know, People understand the, the economic impact of the business, and the world is taking notice. So, you know, that number is only going to increase, right? you know, over the next few years, 10 years, who knows? Yep. You know, obviously with this administration, excuse me, this administration in place, we don't really know what's going to happen, but... It chokes us all up. Yeah. You know, I think it's, this train is moving too fast to be stopped. I mean, yeah. and they, I mean, if you read the news, they got bigger fish to fry right now you, anyway. Do yeah. you think there is any argument against legalization? I haven't found one. No. Yeah, me either. I mean, I think that it's uh, at a place where I think a businessman, any businessman understands um, the benefits. Any doctor understands the fit, the benefits. Um, you know, and I think that it, you know, it can change the world. I know that there is, I know that there is talks globally right now to be able to take it to the level that I think it's always deserved to be. Um, and personally, you how know, about a round of applause for Canada? Well, yeah, dude, Canada. That's, that's huge. Amazing. That's a huge one. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, I think that 
I think that the the importing and exporting of it is going to be pretty crazy to figure out. You got any thoughts on something like that? Yeah, I mean, it's already in place because of Canada and, and countries like Jamaica and so forth. But, uh, you, you know, time will tell. I mean, people, this thing is in such an infancy stage still. No one really knows where it's going to go. Right. I mean, from my experience, Colorado is completely buttoned up when you compare it to California. Okay, they just voted in rec. We don't know where they're going to go, if their laws are going to be a little bit more loose than ours. I mean, time will tell. I mean, but, you know, with so many big markets in California, I mean, it's the seventh largest economy in the world. Yeah. Right. You know, they're going to have to figure it out. But I think everybody looks at Colorado as like, hey, they're doing it the right way. They have a good blueprint. Let's follow their lead. Right. So we can manage this and still have the legitimacy that we need. So the, the, the detractors recognize us as a as a business right so who have you you know from more of a, a national standpoint i don't know if, how much you see outside of the state or whatnot but who do you who do you think gets the most talk is it colorado because it seems to me like everywhere i go people are talking about colorado's cannabis and like the the business of it more so than washington absolutely and i think we have a lot of great brands in the state that have uh you know not only partnered with us but, uh, you know, we were really the first and more powerful, you know, state to really launch this. And, yeah. and, and I think, you know, I'm going to always be biased. I'm a native of Denver. So what? I'm gonna, no. I'm going <laughs> to always, always say, I'm gonna say Colorado is going to beat anybody. But, you know, when I talk to people from California... They're going to say, well, our pot's better because you guys have a dry climate and we don't. Well, so does Oregon and so does Washington and so does every other pot snob in the whole world. They always think that their weed is the best. Yeah, right? well, this this <laughs> business is, is, is full of narcissists, I, uh -huh. I can tell you that. And, yeah. and, and, and myself included, we all have our, our particular tastes. And, yeah. and, and I think, you know, it's going to be tough for me to, to be persuaded. Uh, we'll see yeah. this weekend at the Cup in California. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering about that. I mean, yeah, you know, there's been the, the hiccups between Denver and High Times, and California has always been scrutinized by the way that they're doing things like that. But they're allowing something like this to happen, which I think is important for the movement, important for the education and everything like that. Talk to me a little bit about what you think California has to do. Well, I, I, I think they have to step away from the kind of the wild west mentality if you will i mean and you know and i haven't been out there to really tell you i know a lot about what california's doing right um i see colorado i know what's going on here but i don't really know the ins and outs of california right um but i can you know almost assure you that the la market is going to behave differently than the bay area or right in san diego just you know i mean like anything else it's going to be based on demographics right um, yeah you know but almost the, county specific specific absolutely yeah, yeah. you know and i think long term i think all the states will go legal but you know you're going to have counties or municipalities that don't want anything to do with it right and that's fine because you know people are entitled to their opinion right. and and and, and you know, we're not going to be able to persuade everybody that this is the way to go. I think that the evolution of the industry here in Colorado had to get away from the wild, wild, wild west in order for it to progress to where it has been. Um, do you think that there's any states within the nation that aren't going to? Because there's been some recently that, like Texas, I was kind of like, wow, really? Okay. Well, West yeah, Virginia. Yeah, yeah, and I think those states that are conservative by nature... You know, will ultimately allow it. You know, obviously from a medicinal perspective, because it can help so many people. Right. Um, and the tax benefits and the yeah. economic in impact that it has on those states. I mean, I look at Nevada in particular, and when I was sneaking weed into Las Vegas, not time, that any of us have ever done that. Every time I ever went, I was like, you know what? There's no way they're going to le ever legalize cannabis, particularly in Nevada, because alcohol and tobacco and gambling reign supreme yeah i mean they have the raiders so they'll do anything these days uh -huh. right oh uh, go broncos yeah well, i totally agree though it, but they need they need cannabis and obviously unfortunately the raiders to to build their economy <laughs> back up you know and, yeah um you know vegas was fun for for me when i was younger now it's more of a business thing but you know if cannabis can bring that market back yeah. and give them some profitability i mean it's going to be good to have that extra vice i guess you know in that state because they cater to everybody's vices and if they can do that the right way and i can tell you they're kind of following suit yeah. with colorado yeah and you know and it could you know i think they're going to be a blueprint to follow as well yep well let's shift here let's shift gears a little bit because i'm really excited to know i'm a salesman by trade of course if you haven't figured that out um what it's like to represent high times to you know um have to I deal with that you know what i mean that's you you're on a level you know what i mean 
Yeah, and, and I kind of knew that going in, but that's what made it exciting, you know, to, to come into uh, the cannabis space from outside industry and land with a, you know, a hugely famous brand like High Times. I right. mean, like I said before, it's an honor and a privilege, but, uh, you know, I didn't realize, you know, how much weight I had to carry on my shoulders, particularly right. being the only guy in Colorado. Right. Yeah, that's you nuts. Know, yeah, for I, real. You know, and, and everybody I talked to were like, God, I can't believe that, that you're the only guy and you're the first guy. You have you been, know, dude. I think there's been a lot of us in the last, you know, better part of a decade that have reached out and tried to have relationships in with high times. You know what I mean? Um, I, you know, I... I, I can only imagine what it's like to to have that and to be the one that represents it. And yeah, know. it's awesome, and you know, and and I haven't been doing it a long time. It's almost been a year, but I've met awesome people like you guys and, uh, and some yeah. some some great business leaders in the space. And and you know, I look back at like the early two thousands, you know, when all the people getting into medicinal pot were kind of like our old pot dealers, and you know, and they're now trying to become businessmen. <laughs> yeah. And then you look at all these guys that have you know financial back and they're you know coming from all these other industries now we got a lot of businessmen in the space that are trying to be drug dealers right but, you know for me you know i i carry a medical card because you know i have back issues and, mm -hmm. and uh you know sometimes anxiety mostly when i play golf but you know i mean it's <laughs> it's, it's one of those things that you know it keeps me on the level and yeah. and you know and from a work perspective you know uh, obviously it comes with the the trade you know working for high times and right. you gotta you know assume that i'm you know a customer or a, a patient <laughs> but, you, know, you can call me whatever you want but yeah. uh, but nonetheless it's it, it's it's so cool to be able to to represent such a cool brand um, in a state like Colorado yeah. that is is really leading the way you know in the cannabis space so talk a little bit about uh, about actually working with high times if you're the only guy here um, I'm curious to know about your the remote work experience what? and how it how it compares to my remote work experience basically well, it's great. I don't have to fight rush hour traffic downtown yeah. <laughs> um, every day, so that's nice. Um, but uh, you know, it really allows me to to stay focused uh, and and uh, you know make the appropriate contacts here in Colorado. I mean, I have clients all over the world, but I do spend the the majority of my day building you know relationships with companies like Colorado Harvest and you know and Open and all these other awesome brands that are out there and yeah. and. Uh, you know, and my goal, in addition to creating branding and, and doing, you know, ad campaigns that are successful is is really to, to give Colorado a voice in our publication. And, and one, one thing that I really try to talk to people about is, you know, we do look for writers to contribute stories on behalf of Colorado. Yeah. Now, as long as they don't sound like an advertorial, you know, for that particular brand, you know, they have a good shot of getting in. The magazine or you know getting an online article published yeah and and that can give some young cannabis enthusiasts or journalists and uh, a way to become you know uh, a legitimate journalist in this space yeah sure. that's awesome right uh it's nice to have you guys around dude um speaking of meeting good people you will be able to meet kevin giles at the 5700 consulting gig within the industry if you're in the industry i think that's a badge thing only when is kate um, wada coming back she's coming now? actually next week so okay. we'll have to talk to her about it yeah, yeah. so i'll be uh, doing a, a lunch and learn segment with her on may 10th uh -huh. i believe it's at the lobby downtown yeah they always do a good thing we love kate pay attention uh next week uh we'll talk a little bit more if you're in denver and in the industry to be able to come and check it out kevin giles appreciate you being here from high times definitely want to have you guys around a little bit more well, I'm here if you need me. If, if you guys have any questions, hit me up via cell or email. My email address is just Kevin at High Times. So feel free to hit me up, and I'll uh, be happy to answer any questions that you have. Cool. All right, Kevin. Thanks for coming down, man. We appreciate it. Ha have him hang out for Top 5. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we're going to do take a quick two-minute break. We'll be right back with Top 5. Roll viral. Hey. This is Chloe, check out Screaming for Science's new music video, The King is Crown, only on World Viral TV. I write